Have you guys ever wondered what a girl actually means when they say, I want you to be more vulnerable around me? You're about to learn. Meds watch, Ryan, you guys know the deal. We're coming up at the end. This guy, random dude, all men, wife admits she uses the sex drive to control him after months of issues, but I think it's a good sign. And he apologizes for the long read. By the way, don't do that. If you're doing a field report and it's going to be for like a semi-public consumption, if you thought it was important enough to write it down, stand by it. If you if you feel the need to apologize for long writing, make it to sync. So I'm going to skip a lot of this stuff. So if it sounds a little disjointed when I read it back, it's because I have to go through and skip because there's a lot of parts that just really don't matter. And then after this, I'm going to bring up uh, our prolific Jack Ten of Hearts and his little breakdown and then my thoughts at the end of it. And it's welcome. Welcome to the red pill eight years ago. So the last couple of years for this guy have been rough. Police were involved in some bullshit cybercrime issue last a year and a half. Wife's family having two divorces, father slowly dying. So we had fights and a power struggle about feelings. She wanted him to show more emotion about the events happening in their lives. She managed to pull me in one day to our bedroom and asked me and said it was okay to be vulnerable. One time, and this one time, I let my feelings be heard and it was bad. Oh, it was so bad. I felt like shit. And she looked confused and bewildered during the process. And a few days later, I spoke to her about it honestly. I told her it made me feel worse. Crying made me feel worse, babe. And I didn't really think like it made her feel any better either. And I could tell it. Then he asked her, like, how did you feel about this? He was surprised. Her honest answer was, Bro, I, I don't like to see men cry, and it bothers me more than I'd like to admit. Even though I asked you to be that way, it made me not like you afterwards. I had let her pull me into my frame, let her convince me that it was fine to show feelings, but in the end, we both understood it was somehow wrong. And that was the middle of last year. Sex was diminishing, fighting was increasing, we talked less and less and less. Uh, he has a lot of like dronery here. I'll skip to the next. I'll skip to the important part. She fucking snapped. To this day, I remember I pulled back in revulsion. Moment that why I'm here. I just went back, ate a hash brownie my sister-in-law gave me, which I never do. Enjoyed a trip and felt real high and left. I took a two hour drive in the snow, walked about the lake and on the road. I just didn't give a fuck. I drank and I ate at a good time. Had some Christmas Day stuff with the kids, opened some presents, watched some movies, blah, blah, blah. Then when I got home after that four day vacation, I found this. Here I am. This is what I've done. Spoke to her about counseling. I was honest, not emotional, and stated that the more she went, the more unhappy she was becoming. She said the counselor was just dredging up her past as a reason why she was like where she was and convinced her to stop going. But instead, I got her reading more books on self-improvement rather than a stranger telling her what to think with the books. At least she'll talk to me about them, and we can hash out what works and doesn't as adults. Two, I decided I can still swim, lift, and wear a knee brace in class. I've gone to lose that 15 pounds I gained last year, and I'm already looking better. Three, I've refocused on years past and how I just don't give a fuck. That means I started to stop fighting and letting her draw me into her, her frame. I became more honest about what I wanted. Sure, she turned me down for sex or shit test me, and I've failed a lot of times, but now I just tend to let this shit run off my back. No butt hurt, just okay, dear, and go spend my time doing something I like. If I lose frame, I have a talk with myself and learn what I can do better, and it happens slow. And then finally, I just do my work at home. Romancer for shits and giggles randomly, and working on the humor and pushing her buttons aspect of it. If you guys notice, this is all fairly like basic, bare bones, assertiveness, nice guy behavior, stuff that you see in No More Mr. Nice Guy and When I Snow, I Feel Guilty. So the memes, they're very good. This is really, they've taken it. <laughs> True Alpha. Named Ryan Stone. So it says, I oh asked boy. Murphy about the article he wrote, cuckolding his wife. <laughs> clear up the cuck article. <laughs> clear up the cuck article. Why are you doing this to me? Why are you doing this to me? Why are you doing this to me? If I wasn't prepared to literally impoverish his entire bloodline. I am now concerned for my career. And I still recommend Clear up the cuck article. <laughs> you know what? Fuck you for bringing this up. Yeah. Fuck, uh, you, fuck you. Heartfelt. <laughs> I'm not going to have those guys back on my channel again. Absolutely not. Just use a little bit of fucking common sense. It is just... Mm. That's great. That's uh, You should. Fuck you. Sorry, apologies. Just keep going, dude. One foot in front of the other. Before you know it, this will all be in the real room here. Fuck you. 
and it just goes to show you that like if you stick to the basics, 90% of your problems can be solved. So back to the topic, sorry for the novel, it's Valentine's Day. I've been tracking her cycle and she was ovulating that day. We ended up doing it about three times the weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Normally it's once a week. Wednesday comes, I send her a cute little hump day camel pick on Tuesday, tell her I've taken the day off to clean the gutters in the house and the rental place and do some yard work. She comes home late from boot camp and we go to lunch. We come back, I make the moves, but I get shot down. She asks what my problem is, saying that it wasn't three times on the weekend enough. I told her it's not the amount of times, it's when the mood hits and the time is right. Like the middle of the day when two of us are alone with no kids and no one hurrying to get back to work. She was miffed and angry. I wanted to sex her up. She told me I looked hurt. I told her I was not hurt. But this was as an adult, I could feel disappointed without being hurt. The next night, chilling with a beer and a glass of wine, watching Cramp TV, and I said, About yesterday, I'm not sure what's wrong. Maybe it's in my head or it's just about us. You just do what you want to do. This is the wife saying this, by the way. I can't control you. You don't care about authority or what your friends do. You just do what you want without asking. I'll ask if I can go out, even if I know the answer is yes. You, you just tell me you're going out and then do it. Yesterday, you thought we were going to have sex when I decided we weren't. I think the reason we don't have as much sex is because I feel like it's the only thing I can control. And I just looked at her with a cute smile and said nothing. I didn't agree, didn't disagree, didn't try to fix it. Poked her and she smiled back, felt good. You know, better. Felt like freedom. Do I need to fix her shit? No. Can she change or fix me? No. So there you have it. Jack chimes in at this point. Dude, can you not read between the lines here? He brought up the point at the end where she's like, you just do whatever you want to without it. You know, you know, she feels you can do whatever you want, unencumbered by anxiety or whatever the fuck she's hamstering about. So she feels she's dealing with her worries, her fears, her concerns, all the emotional stuff. She's an emotional island. She's going through some bad shit. And in your head, it feels like you just can't or she feels like you just can't empathize. So she thinks maybe if she can convince you to open up, maybe she'll feel better. Probably thinking you've been repressing your emotions. So it'll be good for you, too. But then you do it. And I bet what happened here is you spewed a bunch of shit you were anxious about, which was different than the shit she was anxious about. And then she started getting anxious about your shit, too. She also resented you for being anxious about different shit because that actually made her feel even more alone on her island of anxiety, her hamster in a maze. Maybe you spewed anxiety about the cybercrime thing. Maybe you're worried you'll be charged, you don't know the maximum sentence, and blah, blah, blah. So there's a way to, there's a way to handle this. Just realize, the vast majority of the time your wife is asking her husband to open up, it's a comfort test for her. She feels emotionally alone. She wants reassurance that you're feeling the same feeling about whatever it is that's making her anxious or sad. Let me use an example. Say you have a sales job, pay salary and commission. The execs announce the sales commissions will be cut by 20%. And say the boss has actually no commission, but he says this. Wow, really fucking you guys over. I can't believe they don't realize this. Half of you guys are going to be out the door in a week, and the other half are going to freak out trying to figure out how to buy Christmas gifts for your family. This is bullshit. I'm going to go do something about this. Now, this boss, despite this new reduced commission policy having zero impact on him, just echoed exactly what everybody else felt. They felt fucked over. They're anxious about the impact on their families. They're entertaining thoughts of getting a new job. But your boss seems to recognize that. So, you know, maybe they'll ride things out, see if he can do something about it. He probably can, but you also know, if you do interview somewhere else and you ask for references, you can give him your current boss, which is superior reference to your last employer from four years ago. So it's just not an emotional blanket. It can actually make you feel more likely to succeed at whatever actions you take in the future. Now, rewind this. Let's play out scenario two. Same thing. And your boss is an idiot who says, I know this is a cut. I wish I had better news. Well, fuck that emotionless asshole and the clueless executives don't know what the fuck they're doing. So it's time to work on your resume. So rewind again. Scenario three. Say your boss does express his own feelings about this. And, oh, this is bad. What if you guys quit for a better job? Then I'll have a smaller sales team. Plus, my team will be smaller than this guy, and they'll promote him instead of me. I'm worried about this. I think it's very possible your reaction to your wife was scenario three. So yeah, you can shut the fuck up in situations like this, but that's not what your wife wants in a comfort test. She wants to hear shit like, you know, vulnerable. Who wouldn't feel vulnerable? Marriages are ending. Lives are ending. 
can't help but think about yourself and the loved ones. Whatever it is specifically that she's feeling anxiety about. Get it? And at the risk of some usual hubris, I'm like 98% sure that your wife would have melted in your arms if you actually said that. I bet she wouldn't have noticed, just like I bet a lot of you didn't notice right now, that you didn't actually confess any feeling. Every sentence was spoken in the second person. You, you, you. You aren't confessing your vulnerability at all. You're packaging her vulnerability into a compact and simple package. And you're saying, look, do I think I could turn this mess of thoughts in your mind into a simple package like this if I didn't have an idea what you were going through? And you know what? Maybe she doesn't buy it all wholesale. Maybe, you know, she wants things to conclude, though. And you sound calm and reassuringly like who does? Who wants anything to end? So this is kind of like this is a really advanced version of fogging, which is a tool you may have learned had you been following along in the channel. Uh, no more Mr. Nice Guy. When I say no, I feel guilty. That sort of thing. Fogging. But you're essentially summarizing her feelings or using rhetorical questions to parse out what those feelings are. So back to you and me. I'm going to skip. There is an entire section that's just as long as all that stuff I've already read. It's not as important. I'll skip to the end where you get to like main part of the message. Just take it from there. So he is talking about what she needs. Da -da -da. There, is your wife the oldest teenager in the room? Some women fit the archetype well, but others don't. I know this contradicts the canonical red pill wisdom, but recognize the demographic they're discussing are mostly younger women who are literally teenagers only a few years before. Some women never mature from this stage, especially if they're neurotic. Your wife will comfort test you when she wants comfort. She will shit test you once she wants you to give a shit. The way she will do this, and her most effective response to pull into your frame, may actually vary from marriage to marriage. So shut the fuck up is just as a, as a as a placeholder and it's more so about understanding the emotional maturity of your wife and then dealing with this. You know what they say? Like they just want a man who gets it. Yeah. So carrying on, they kind of he goes some back and forth and the guy ends up talking to his wife, coming back a couple days later and he goes, yeah, it turns out it was the family's divorce and the dad dying. That was the stuff she was anxious about. So OK. And then she was worried because like, oh, now she gets to be free and do whatever she wants too the same problem she had with the husband. So she learns the problem isn't about uh, the divorce so much, but it's that envy for a divorced sister. And you ended up responding with like some compliment that was infantilizing at best, condescending at worst, and that's when she snapped. So next part speaks about the counseling. You remember the part earlier about the counseling? And every time she went there, she felt more, she felt more depressed about it and he convinced her not to go. Jack's like, that's a common problem in individual therapy. The therapist thinks they're playing fucking Clue and consider it a winning condition that they announce your fucked up mental state is Colonel Anxious, who had a motive because of bad formative experiences. Like, way to go, Sherlock. Really nailed that one. But how do you arrest Colonel Anxious and put him in jail so he's not terrorizing people? You know, good therapists should help you figure out. The problem is with your interpersonal relationships. You got to do some things. You got to change some actions. But the bad ones end up just trying to, like, solve the mystery and then give you a dump all that anxiety in your lap, which is exactly the mirror of what you were doing to her by not fogging. So now to the main, the main part of it where uh, the wife admits she was using sex to exert her own measure of control in the relationship. Jack's like, dude, your wife is responsible for her own emotions and the fucked up mental models that drive those. But if her fucked up mental models mean that she irrationally rejects sex because she wants some misguided need for control, well, she is overtly announcing, I don't want to enter your frame because I've decided it's better to lash out with self-destructive actions instead. I know it makes no sense, but that's what I'm going to do. A lot of women think this way. But it's impossible to do much about it because they don't even realize that they think this way. You just act happier and happier. She just gets pissed and pissed and pissed, mostly because she wishes she could just operate with a healthy and constructive mind like you do. But she's jealous and resentful she can't, and it's easier to try to bring you down instead of figuring out her shit. And this will keep happening until you get to an epic shit test known as the main event. Talked about that before in uh, Praxeology Volume 1 and 2. Just know it's like the mother of all comfort tests. And she's going to realize how stupid her self-destructive behavior is and her thinking to herself and you. And it's all hurting you, so she just comes to you on your terms. Now here's the thing. Your wife is being very overt with this thinking, which means, at least in my opinion, you don't need a main event, which is good. 
because the whole sequence of events that lead up to the catharsis doesn't always happen. There was our uh, 65 year old guy who was, he's, I guess he's in his 70s now. But if his first wife would have smoothly escalated to a main event and then calmed the fuck down, you know, his, he wouldn't have been divorced. But. Uh, da, 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 da. So your wife's going to go down this path and maybe she'll figure out it's a bad path and join your frame or maybe she's too fucked up in the head to do that. You can't control it. So can you influence that? Sure. Are you saying you've never influenced everybody in life before? Come on. So your wife isn't even conscious of it. There's not much you can do with any of the influence, but your wife is con uh, conscious of it, which is good. Your wife is admitting in plain overt language that she acts like a bitch because she's anxious that she cannot control shit. She's acknowledging it very well could be about that. And that's why I've written such a long thing on you. All right, the rest is just some eagle fluffing here. So we'll skip past it to, to my thought. This is actually what... Uh, it was one of the quintessential examples we had used to get to the, the three types of dysfunctional captains, the guys that find themselves needing dread in a marriage. This is the type two captain, the captain with the, the constantly complaining passenger. The captain's neurotic, likes to fix the wife. The wife lashes out. Huge amounts of anxiety in that. And then the, the husband's walking on eggshells with her at all times. And that's when you get situations like this. And that's why, again, you cannot think I can save the marriage because People are really stuck in their in their trains of thought. So right now, for better or worse, mostly worse, this wife believes the sex life is the only place I have control. So it's the only place I'm going to exert any authority, which leads to a dead bedroom because that's the only time when she's not feeling anxious. Feels like shit, but she doesn't feel anxious. Then she sees the husband working on himself, improving himself, going through dread. He's having a great time. He's doing better, but she's too stubborn to follow along because that would require her admitting she was wrong. And this is where main events come from. Eventually, just like they snap and they're like, all right, I got nothing else. I don't know what to do to keep you around big. And this is why you have to have snot bubbles or it's not a main event because it's literally somebody. It's almost like a girl having her own version of a zeroing out moment. If you guys don't know what that is, that's where uh, a guy has something that shatters his worldview, like a divorce and the church turned on him, stuff like that. And it essentially is like a neurotic, uh, Egos, a snapping of your ego. Snap. It's almost like a fight or flight response. Anyways, it's kind of like a lot of this stuff is predicated on the stuff. You see the terms are all, I'm all over the map. Bear with me. Let's cut back to center here. But now that you see these kind of things happening, I think the big takeaway is just understanding the depth of a statement like a girl wants a guy who just gets it, what that means. In this case for you, it doesn't matter if you have a neurotic wife who's using who's lashing out with these really crappy mental models she does. It doesn't matter if she's narcissistic parents that have trained her to be something that you don't like. All that matters is when you start hearing the, I need you to be more vulnerable. I want you to open up in front of me. She doesn't want to hear shit about you. She wants you to let her know that she's not feeling shit in isolation. So just ask some probing questions. She's more than happy to run her mouth about the stuff bothering you and repeat it back to her in simple language. If you can do that, you can pass a comfort test. Now, for most of you guys, you may not have to worry about that yet because comfort tests come when a woman is worried about losing you. So if you have an issue with attraction, sexual desire, she finds you unattractive or heaven forbid you're single and you can't get a girl, you're never going to get a comfort test. You're never going to get it. But once you're at the point where you're like, dude, I could replace her with a 25 year old tomorrow. When there's a girl at the Christmas party that's like can't keep her hands off of you and your wife's sitting there having to make guard and she starts having those freak out moments, you're going to start getting comfort tests. And the problem is most guys nowadays are autistic and they're so busy thinking about their power fantasy about how they can be the man, the alpha male and shit like that, that they forget about these very basic human skills that can really help out. If you, heaven forbid, want to keep your woman around, you know, mother of your children, the wife and whatever, girlfriend, doesn't even matter. A lot of times, all you have to do is whatever the girl is crying and hamstering about, just reflect back on. It's like, I hear you. I understand. You don't understand me. Oh, yeah. Bam, 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 bam. I understand. And it calms them down. But like everything, you don't have to. That's that's the part I'll leave it on here, is that when you're receiving a comfort test like this, there's always that little moment you have to, in your head, you have to go, does she deserve it? Because if she is otherwise trying her best, being a good wife, being a good girlfriend, being a good mother, stuff like that, and you're happy, and you get these comfort requests for comfort tests, yeah, passing them, it's great. Now you're getting what you want, she gets what she wants, she gets emotional stability, you get sexual fulfillment, you guys raise a family, and everybody's happy. 
But if she's just an outright bitch all the time, and then she still comes at you for comfort test, you're more than welcome to nuke it, to be like this guy. Well, maybe better than this guy. Maybe don't cry in front of your wife too, but you know what I mean? Just be like, oh, that sucks, man, and move on. So you can establish like, yeah, if you want comfort, that's a value that I bring to a relationship. But if I'm not getting what I want, I'm not in the mindset to actually give that out. Cuddles aren't free. That's the key to it. Did any of that make sense? 